Welcome back to the lectures in chemistry and uh, the topic of atomic structure and chemical bonding. My name is Mangala Sundar and I am in the Department of Chemistry, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. In the last lecture, we uh, began looking at the conjugated systems and an approximate method of chemical bonding, a quantum mechanical method that was proposed by Eric Huckel and we were looking at the linear conjugated systems uh, starting with of course, ethylene uh, where there is only a single uh, double bond uh, that is one, one double bond and uh, this was extended to the butadiene 1, 3 butadiene where there are two double bonds alternate uh, single bond and a double bond and a comparison was made on the energies of the butadiene electron uh, with electrons with the uh, hypothetical system of two ethylenes coupled to each other or connected to each other without any delocalization of the electron cloud. And we found out that the delocalization of the electrons in the butadiene results in this additional stability and it is up to the order of about uh, minus 30 kilojoules per mole or so. The, the process is the process of calculating these things in order to account for what we measure experimentally is what this uh, the approximation method is all about. We shall continue that uh, in uh, today's lecture by extending this to one uh, slightly longer carbon chain, a 6 carbon chain 135 hexatriene and also look at the more important and more often studied Huckel system namely the cyclic systems of conjugated aromatic hydrocarbons and extension of that to multiple rings, uh, fused rings such as naphthalene, anthracene, etcetera. I will not do all of that, but I shall introduce uh, the Huckel method for benzene as part of today's lecture and then probably leave a number of problems for you to attempt along similar lines. Okay. So, today's lecture we start with the, uh, we continue with the Huckel molecular orbital theory. And uh, before we proceed with uh, a new system, let us look at 1,3-butadiene uh, a little bit more. Please remember from the last lecture that we wrote down the wave functions for the 1,3-butadiene in this form namely the 4 p orbitals associated with carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3 and carbon 4. The 4 p orbitals and the numerical coefficients in front of them uh, representing uh, in a sense the amplitude of this uh, wave function. The square of this number uh, is uh, the contribution to this molecular orbital from carbon 1 p orbital. 0 0.6015 square is the contribution to this molecular orbital from the carbon 2 p orbital and so on. However, there are signs which tell you that the orbital combinations are uh, done with very specific phase relations between them phase relations between them. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And if you look at the second orbital, the phase relations are peculiar in the sense the third phi p 3 and the fourth one phi p 4 come with a minus sign and therefore, the molecular orbital is such that 
uh, the phi p 1 phi p 2 they are both positive and this is negative. Therefore, somewhere along that there is a node right in between p 2 and p 3 there is a node and psi 3 has the phase convention phase uh, relation as given here and psi 4 has the phases of uh, second and the fourth p orbital inverted. So, let us plot these things to get an idea of what is meant by the nodal plane and uh, uh, if there is one. So, let us see psi 1 it is 0.37. Uh, so, the phi p 1 has a smaller contribution p 2 and p 3 have larger contributions p 4 the same as p 1. So, let us plot that okay. psi 1. I would say p 1 with a plus minus a carbon 1 smaller contribution and p 2 is a larger contribution uh, they have to be symmetric. Let us do that and get rid of this part roughly. It is larger because the numerical coefficient in front of this is uh, bigger. So, it is also with the plus sign and the third carbon has exactly the same numerical coefficient as in the second carbon. So, this is also plus minus and the fourth carbon has the same numerical coefficient as in the first carbon. So, it is plus minus. So, this uh, wave function all the p orbitals are in the same phase and that therefore, the, the electron density uh, when you square this uh, coefficient and plot the electron density it is a sort of a uh, an oval shaped. Now, psi 2 if you look at the contribution of the individual p orbitals psi 2 has a larger p 1 larger p 4, but p 3 and p 4 are negative. So, let us keep that in mind psi 2 is larger p 1 plus minus smaller p 2. smaller p 3 and larger p 4. Well, these are uh, 1 and 4 have the same uh, contribution, 2 and 3 have the same contribution of course, reduced and let us see the signs again. The signs are plus plus minus minus. So, what we need to do plus plus minus minus and this of course, is plus. Therefore, you see that the wave function changes sign from this p 2 orbital to this p uh, 3 orbital carbon 3 p orbital carbon 2 p orbital. Therefore, the wave function goes through a node and the plane that separates carbon 1 carbon 2 from carbon 3 and carbon 4 is called a nodal plane. Okay. What about psi 3? Psi 3 has uh, again 1 and 4 larger, so it is the same picture, but 2 and 3 negative. So, all that we need to do for psi 3, 1 and 4 larger, 2 and 3 smaller, but uh, 2 and 3 uh, the way we looked at it what was the negative sign? The sign was 2 and 3 were negative minus and minus. So, if you are looking at the signs here, so if it is minus 2 is minus 3 is minus first one is plus first one is plus fourth one is plus minus of course, minus plus plus. So, you see that there are, there are two nodal planes here because the orbital is negative throughout between 2 and 3, 
the probabilities are of course the squares of them so we do not need to worry about the probabilities probabilities will never become negative okay so you have two nodal planes okay psi 3 this is psi 3 psi 4 so it sort of tells you that this is clearly bonding this is less bonding there is a nodal plane but still the carbon density is are such that there is symmetric between I mean there is a symmetry of the electron density right reflected from the middle of the C1, C2, C3, C4 chain but what about Psi4 if you look at Psi4 that has also two nodal planes you see it is one smaller 2 and 3 larger so first let us capture that picture 2 and 3 larger 1 and 4 are smaller so 1 let me just draw that 2 and 3 are larger one and four are smaller of the same size and if we look at the signs uh, one four small two three large two is negative four is negative so what we have in this picture is two we have to mark negative four we have to mark negative and one and four positive uh, positive positive okay let us look at that you see the difference between 3 and 4 there are still two nodal planes here because the orbital changes sign between carbon 1 and carbon 2 the molecular orbital uh, has the 2 p orbitals with different signs and uh, there is also a change in sign uh, I guess there is also a change in sign here okay. plus minus plus minus plus minus three nodal planes. So clearly this is also anti bonding for this uh, group of four electrons anti bonding. I mean you have to be careful about these phrases but the point is that the electrons uh, the four electrons are likely to be in orbital psi 1 and psi 2 for the other reason that psi 1 and psi 2 have the lowest energies please remember alpha and beta are negative if uh, alpha and beta are negative obviously the sum of alpha plus 1.618 beta is negative and uh, the second orbital is also negative therefore the two electrons in orbitals uh, with the wave function with the wave function psi 1 and two electrons with the uh, wave function psi 2 so you have all the four electrons in that orbital so it is clear that the four electrons are placed accordingly and uh, we also looked at this uh, by way of looking at the homo lumo gap and so on so you can see that the 4 psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 or uh, I think I have already done that before so let me not repeat that here. Okay. Now there is one other thing before we move on to the cyclic system namely what is the charge density on each of the carbon. I mean we should have some reason to believe that the electron density on uh, uh, each of the carbon should be the same otherwise there is going to be differences between the bonding capabilities and the bond lengths perhaps and in 13 butadiene we have only one carbon bond. So the charge density the way we calculate the charge density is you look at the wave functions here these four wave functions uh, since the electrons are there in the first orbital psi 1 and psi 2 uh, but not in the orbital psi 3 and psi 4 the orbital psi 3 and psi 4 would not contribute to the electron density they are empty orbitals the orbitals 1 and 2 molecular orbital psi 1 and psi 2 would contribute to the total electron density calculation by how much if you look at carbon 1 in psi 1 
uh, it is 0 0.3717. So, therefore, the square of this represents the probability that the electron is in phi p 1. The 0 0.6015, the square of that represents the probability that the electron inside 2 molecular orbital is uh, found in phi p 1. Therefore, if you think about carbon 1, the total electron density is the sum of these squares, because these two represent the probabilities of finding the electrons in orbital uh, p 1 corresponding to carbon 1. Due to the fact that the electrons are either in psi 1 or in psi 2, in this case both in psi 1 and both in psi 2. How many electrons? There are two electrons in psi 1, there are two electrons in psi 2. Therefore, the total charge density that you have to calculate would turn out to be for carbon 1, the contribution to phi p 1 in psi 1 plus the contribution to phi p 1 in psi 2. Okay. There are two electrons here, there are two electrons here. The contribution to phi p 1 is the probability square which is point, uh, what was that? Psi 1 was uh, 0.3717 square. So, 0.3717 square and since it is to be multiplied by the total number of electrons which is 2 in this case and the other for phi psi 2 if you look at it. psi 2 it is 0 0.6015 square and again 2 electrons in psi p 2. So, it is 2 times 0 0.6015 square. So, this is the total charge density on each of the carbon in this case carbon 1 is the sum of this and this is of course equal to 1. Please remember this is how we got the normalization constant any one of these square 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 add them all up it is 1 and that is what you have. Likewise, if you calculate the charge density on C 2, it is a contribution, contribution to phi p 2 contribution of phi p 2 to psi 1 plus contribution of phi p 2 to psi 2 and each of this contribution is multiplied by the total number of electrons in each of these molecular orbital which is 2 and you will find that to be exactly 1. And likewise for C 3 you will get the total charge density to be 1. And for C 4 also the total charge density to be 1. Which means that on each of the carbon the total charge density of the electron density if you look at it on each of the carbon is 1 for both these molecular orbitals which means that there is a homogenization. Okay. So, this is another way of understanding what is called the delocalization in terms of the electron charge densities. In terms of placing the orbitals, the orbitals of course, come with the plus minus signs to tell you that these orbitals are orthogonal to each other and uh, they represent the node or anti node character or bonding and anti bonding character similar to what we did in the case of the hydrogen molecule ion and hydrogen molecule. So, these pictures are very useful, but to a limited extent and Huckel, Huckel molecular orbital theory gives you this very nice way of pictorial pictorially representing the molecular orbital and the electron charge densities. Uh, and at a time when of course, computers were not available at a time when computational power was non-existent and so on. Uh, today, we uh, like to teach Huckel molecular orbital theory for some of the concepts that are introduced in the process. Uh, it is not probably as useful as uh, doing a brute force uh, many CPU calculations. It does not matter, that is it is important to understand the basic principles of computational chemistry and Huckel molecular orbital theory is a cornerstone in that sense. Okay, now, uh, the since we are running out of time, I am going to write the uh, uh, linear chain 1, 3, 5, uh, uh, what is this 1, 3, 5 hexatriene. Okay. 
very quickly and leave you with uh, uh, the electron density sort of homogenized. Okay. Uh, there is nothing called the plus or minus for the electron density both up and down are the same. So, if you do that the Huckel matrix as an exercise uh, I would want you to derive that and let me write the Huckel matrix very quickly it is x 1 sorry let us go back uh, it is x 1 0 0 0 0 it is 1 x 1 0 0 0 0 1 x 1 0 0 0 0 1 x 1 0 0 0 0 1 x 1 0 0 0 0 1 x. Okay. All these matrices are tri diagonal let me all these matrices are tri diagonal let me see if I can draw that line. You can see that one off diagonal here and one off diagonal here okay. tri diagonal matrices Eigen values can be easily obtained there is a general expression for this in textbooks maybe in the assignment I will give you that expression for you to uh, calculate, but the energies are known, the eigenvalues are known and you can calculate the charge densities the same way that we uh, did a few minutes ago. You can also write the wave functions that appear in the plus minus sign depending on how you solve the eigenvectors and so on. Therefore, I leave this problem to you to study the uh, all these aspects as an assignment. Okay. Now, let us get to the other uh, important aspect namely the cyclic systems and we will start with the aromatic uh, sorry we will start with uh, the first uh, system namely uh, butad cyclobutadiene okay, cyclic systems cyclobutadiene. picture four carbons and now you cannot tell which is one which is two which is three which is four in a linear chain you had terminal carbons and you had carbons in the middle so a numbering makes made sense here my one two three can be your two three uh, four one and so on uh, the point is that uh, with one label we will see that the Hamiltonian matrix the Huckel matrix has just a small variation from the butadiene matrix. The butadiene matrix if you remember is x 1 0 0 1 x 1 0 0 1 x 1 0 0 1 x. This is for butadiene. Now, cyclic butadiene you see that the atom 1 carbon 1 p orbital and carbon 4 p orbitals are adjacent and therefore, the 1 4 which was not there in the linear chain because they were far away this is 1 2 3 4. The 1 4 linear chain now since it is a cyclic chain you have 1 4 which also contributes a beta term and therefore, this is 1 for cyclic butadiene and likewise for 4 atom 4 it is 1 that is all there is a difference the Huckel matrix. So, from any linear chain to a cyclic chain cyclic uh, system when you go in the end to end uh, uh, bonding will ensure that the terminal carbons what you called as the terminal carbons in a linear chain now will have a h i j matrix element h 1 n h n 1 matrix element inside nothing else changes all the other things are exactly what you had in the linear chain. Therefore, this is the only difference between the butadiene and cyclic butadiene uh, and uh, cyclobutadiene sorry cyclobutadiene 
is that what I said here? Yeah, I have said that. Yes. So in the cyclic system, you have that, and its eigenvalues can be written down. So the eigenvalues for cyclobutadiene, uh, when you solve this, uh, basically you are going to expand to this determinant and get the values. The eigenvalues will turn out to be E1 is alpha plus 2 beta, E2 and E3 will be alpha, it is a degenerate system and E4 will be alpha minus 2 beta. Okay. So if you draw the molecular orbitals uh, for the energies E1, this is alpha plus 2 beta and then you have alpha which is doubly degenerate. So it is E2, E3, this is alpha and the number of electrons that we can uh, assign is for the ground state alpha plus 2 beta 2 electrons and because it is degenerate the spin is supposed to be uh, uh, such that they are unpaired and then we have E4 which is given by alpha minus 2 beta and therefore you see that the homo lumo gap this is the highest occupied molecular orbital and this is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital the homo lumo gap is obviously 2 beta. Okay. What are the wave functions? The Eigen functions for the system psi 1 is 1 by 2 phi p 1 plus phi p 2 plus phi p 3 plus phi p 4. then psi 2, there are two ways of doing it uh, psi 2 and psi 3. In principle if we do a symmetry group analysis we will end up getting the 1 by 2 with uh, 2 positive signs and 2 negative signs and there are 4 such combinations that is one way but let me do the other way around which is uh, write the psi 2 as 1 by root 2 phi P1 minus phi P3 and psi 3 which is uh, degenerate to psi 2 will have the other 1 by root 2 phi P2 minus phi P4. I will tell you in a minute what this leads to and psi 4 is of course you have 1 by 2 times phi P1 minus phi p 2 minus phi p 3 and uh, my plus phi p 4 I think sorry well, minus plus minus sorry it is minus phi p 4. Okay. Well the, the reason why we chose this instead of uh, taking the 4 uh, linear combinations all the four orbitals is, is pedantic in this case of course because you see that psi 2 and psi 3 correspond to degenerate orbitals and if you are talking about degenerate systems uh, the two wave functions corresponding to degenerate systems any linear combination of those two uh, wave functions is also an eigenfunction of the same Hamiltonian therefore in principle you can have uh, the all the four orbitals with the plus minus signs done in such a way that if I write a coefficient of 1 by 2 outside with 1, 1, 1, 1 and these are the weights uh, given to the uh, orbitals phi p 3, phi p 4, then in principle I can have 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. Now you saw that it is all 1 by 2 multiplied. So this is also a possible way of writing the uh, cyclobutadiene as uh, the atomic uh, the molecular orbitals with the contributions of phi p 1, phi p 2 etc. Uh, the Eigen functions in this case because of the degeneracy can be represented in multiple ways okay. and one way is that uh, contribution phi p 1 minus phi p 3 
and the contribution phi p 2 minus phi p 4 corresponding to a 2 and the other way is that the contribution like this phi p 1 plus phi p 2 minus phi p 3 minus phi p 4 multiplied by 1 by 2 and likewise phi p 1 minus phi p 2 minus phi p 3 plus phi p 4 all multiplied by 1 by 2. So, it does not matter. What is important is that the eigenfunctions are such that the electron densities when you calculate on each of the carbon they will all turn out to be the same. Okay. Now, the only difference that you have to keep in mind is that the electrons are now contributed, uh, the electrons contribute differently. For example, the wave function psi 1 has two electrons associated with that and the wave function psi 2 and psi 3 have one electron each associated with that and therefore, if you are looking at the carbon 1 electron density, you have to multiply the coefficient of IP 1 on psi 1 squared, coefficient squared by 2 because there are two electrons in psi 1 and the psi 2 and psi 3 contributing one electron, you have to multiply the corresponding coefficient squared by just 1. So, here for example, if you do that, it is 1 by 4 multiplied by 2 and 1 by root 2 squared multiplied by 1. The psi 3 does not have any phi p 1. Therefore, you will have 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 which is 1. So, the electron density still turns out to be the 1. Ultimately, it is the electron density and it is the properties which are important. The wave functions are such that the square of the wave functions have the meanings of probability interpretations. The signs of the wave functions are important in uh, determining bonding, anti-bonding kind of a concept but the coefficients themselves uh, do not have any other interpretation. It is their squares and therefore, the signs and linear combinations can be chosen conveniently. Okay. So, this is for cyclobutadiene. Let us go quickly to benzene and finish uh, this part of the lecture and uh, leave you to study uh, Huckel molecular orbit theory in more detail on your own. Okay. Let us do benzene. 6 carbons, 4 your original Kekulé structures, whichever it is. We know in molecular orbital picture or in the quantum mechanics that we cannot distinguish between these carbons. The Huckel matrix now is the same starting matrix like what we had earlier for the tridiagonal matrix for the 1, 3, 5 cyclo, uh, sorry 1, 3, 5 hexatriene except that we are going to add the two terminal uh, uh, portions 1, 6 and 6, 1 to 1. Okay. So, what is the Huckel matrix therefore? For benzene it is x 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 because the sixth carbon is bonded to carbon 1. Then you have 1 x 1 0 0 0, 1 x 1. These things do not change the near neighbors are only the two neighbors on either side 0 1 x 1 0, 0 0 0 1 x 1 and now on the sixth row you have 1 here 0 0 0 1 x. Okay. Okay. This is the determinant that you want to set and remember x is equal to alpha minus E by beta. Okay. So, the energy E is there. What are the solutions? Okay. I expanding this determinant is your uh, pastime and obtaining the secular equation, uh, it is an assignment, please do it. And the answer that we get for benzene, let me write down the answers. We get uh, again uh, two degenerate states. In fact, that is a general theorem that uh, when the molecule has a symmetry of more than a certain type on rotational axis, it will have degenerate states, but uh, those are all things we will do when we go to group theory. Right now, the four, these four energy levels that we find with the degeneracies are E 1 is alpha plus 2 beta, the lowest energy, E 2 and E 3 
is alpha plus beta E 4 E 5 is alpha minus beta and E 6 is alpha minus 2 beta. And there are 6 pi electrons. So, assigning them carefully will give rise to this picture that we have 6 uh, electrons in the first 3 orbitals and this is the highest occupied molecular orbital and this is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital and therefore, you see that the delta E the homo lumo gap. is 2 beta again. Okay. What is the resonance energy or delocalization energy? The difference between the energies of the 6 electrons minus the energies of the 6 electrons assuming that bonds are the double bonds are localized. So, if you calculate that the in the case of ethylene if you remember the resonance energy 3 localized ethylene bonds is uh, going to give you 6 into alpha plus beta. And, uh, benzene, you have 2 electrons in alpha plus 2 beta, 2 electrons in alpha minus plus beta and 2 electrons in alpha plus beta. Yeah, so alpha plus 2 beta. So, if you look at it, the difference between these two is again 4 plus 2 plus 8 beta, this is 6 beta, the alphas cancel out, resonance energy is 2 beta. Okay. So, uh, what about the molecular orbitals for benzene? The expressions are long, but let me write them down, psi 1 which has the energy alpha plus 2 beta is 1 by root 6 very symmetric 5 p 1 plus 5 p 2 plus 5 p 3 plus 5 p 4 plus 5 p 5 plus 5 p 6. It is normalized you can see that the contributions of the individual orbitals 5 p 1 square 5 p 2 square each one is normalized. And therefore, psi 1 star psi 1 d tau if you do that and neglect the overlap which we did in the Huckel molecular orbital theory, it is 1 by 6 multiplied by 6 and therefore, the wave function is uh, normalized to 1. What are the other uh, uh, 5 orbitals? Let me quickly write them down and also write the pictures of some of them to give you an idea of what are the nodal planes and, uh, uh, and so on. So, let us look at psi 2 it is 1 by it is 1 by 2 5 p 2 plus 5 p 3 minus 5 p 4 5 p 5 minus 5 p 6 okay psi 3 is 1 by root 3 times 5 p 1 plus 1 by 2 5 p 2 minus 1 by 2 5 p 3 minus 5 p 4 minus 1 by 2 5 p 5 plus 1 by 2 5 p 6. Okay. These are both are degenerate orbitals and therefore, in principle 2 orthogonal linear combinations of these 2 will also form the corresponding molecular orbital. Psi 4 
is you can write from psi 2 it is 1 by 2 times phi p 2 minus phi p 3 plus phi p 5 minus phi p 6. psi 5 is also written from the orbital psi 3, 1 by root 5 phi p 1 minus 1 by 2 phi p 2 minus 1 by 2 phi p 3 plus 1 by 4, 1 by 2 sorry plus phi p 4. minus 1 by 2 phi p 5 minus 1 by 2 phi p 6 and these two are the degenerate orbitals uh, with the energy alpha minus beta these are with the orbital energies alpha plus beta and the last one psi 6 is obtained from psi 1 with alternate uh, minus signs namely phi p 1 minus phi p 2 plus phi p 3 minus phi p 4 plus phi p 5 minus phi p 6. Okay. So, now if we look at the orbitals on the ring, psi 1 essentially means all the orbitals are plus minus, all of them are in the same phase plus minus plus minus no nodal plane the electron density is such that it does not go through any uh, uh, the electron wave function is such that it does not go through any zeros okay, between the p orbitals. What about psi 6 which is also easy to draw because the carbon uh, p orbitals uh, every alternate p orbital is uh, uh, of the same sign. So, you have plus minus plus minus and plus minus and the other three are negative combinations minus plus minus plus minus plus. Okay. Now, you can see that there is a nodal plane here the orbital sort of goes through and it goes through a nodal plane here and again it goes through a nodal plane. You can see that plus minus plus plus and goes through that you can see that it sort of goes down here. You see that there are plus minus there is a nodal plane, there is a nodal plane. There are only three planes because you, you can see that this nodal plane is uh, uh, exactly the uh, in, a, in a symmetric system these two is this one nodal plane, these two is another nodal plane and these two is another nodal plane. So, you have uh, a way of uh, looking at uh, pictorially the six molecular orbitals of the uh, benzene and also look at the charge densities on all the 6 carbons. Uh, if you calculate it by the way I did namely take each molecular orbital uh, determine the square of the coefficient corresponding to the carbon p orbital multiply by the number of electrons that orbital has and add them all up for all the molecular orbitals for that single carbon atom if you add them all up you get answer 1. We have done that earlier and you repeat this exercise uh, to verify for yourself that the theory gives you uh, uniform electron density on all the 6 carbons. Okay. So, Huckel molecular orbital theory is a very beautiful uh, uh, approximate theory. Please remember that these things were discussed, I mean developed long, long before the computers were uh, discovered and uh, computers were uh, invented and uh, computational calculations were done. Uh, the uh, linear combination of this kind of uh, atomic orbitals to form uh, the molecular orbital. There is an entirely different approach based on the point group symmetry of these molecules uh, where 
due to the irreducible representations of the point groups or based on them, we can in fact construct some of these linear combinations. You will see that the results are exactly the same. That is a, a different way of doing it. Often people think that that is a more elegant way of doing it, but uh, elegance is not a question, I mean it is a question of uh, one's own viewpoint. Uh, ultimately, we should be able to compute the molecular orbital, we should be able to calculate the energies and compare them with the experiments in order to do this in, in a meaningful way that theory and experiments uh, corroborate each other. Therefore, in that sense, I would say the Huckel molecular orbital theory is a very good starting point for a large number of uh, systems to be studied in organic chemistry. And I will not deal with this any further. Uh, an extended molecular orbital approach may be given later uh, in an advanced series of lectures. Until then, thank you very much.